All right, what's up everybody? Welcome to another Friday Mastermind. Uh, every Friday for over six years, we have been coming live at nine o'clock Pacific every Friday. If you are not subscribed, you can get signed up in our Facebook group, Mortgage Coach Productivity Mastermind. And then always at the top of savageinsights.com, I always have the next call we're doing. So uh, today we've got an awesome special guest. Before we bring Shay on stage, what's up, Mr. Bookspin? You know, not much, not much. I'm sitting down. I was going to stand up real quick, but I'm just doing a, a post in the Win by Noon Facebook group. Um, I'm kicking off a free coaching series, like free, like I'm not selling anything. Um, starting, It's going to start next Friday. It's going to be a little wonky, my timing, because of my daughter's wedding and Deborah and I teaching exactly what to say and all the other craziness I have. Uh, or busyness, I won't call it craziness, um, good things going on, but I'm um, posting right now in the Win by Noon user mastermind group. So of course, everyone from our group is invited, but it's going to be a free coaching series and I'm calling it the 100K challenge. Um, so I'm really going to challenge uh, our community to add $100,000 of revenue uh, in the next six months that they weren't expecting. And so I got a plan and I'm going to roll it into some other stuff, but I was trying to come up with a catchy title. I'm going to invite some realtors to it too. But uh, if you want to join it um, momentarily, once I stop talking and Deborah starts talking, I'm going to finish my post in the Facebook group and uh, just go over there, say you're part of the mortgage coach community. I'll let you in and then sign up for that meeting. It's going to be next Friday at noon Pacific, the 15th. I'm kicking it off. So that is super exciting. I haven't even told you about that, Dave. So I'm, I'm really, yeah, I was just going to say, bro, I don't know about this, but I can't wait to hear about it. And uh you got me to stand up. I decided to put get my, my desk stand up. So thanks for the stand up push. What's up, D Bird? Dude, I just realized your books are color coded. Did I just noticed that, that too. Like, um, wow. my kids' books are color coded. That's, so, so that I, awesome. I, I, it's funny. I, I had all my books like leadership, sales, and then I, I have a designer who helped me with my new office. And they were like, wow. for like my backdrop, they're like, oh, they need to be color coded. I'm like, genius it looks cool yeah that's awesome i would have done it by category so yeah well I'm but anyway do the colors but oh save that for another day todd i do have a quick question for you on the win by noon planners if people want to get theirs by q4 is there a cutoff of when they can can order them i'm doing some agent classes on how to prep your q4 to have a winning end of the year oh, and setting that, up your next what, year correctly? What a great question. Um, you know, we've already shipped out all the subscriptions. Um, so mm -hmm. everyone who's a subscriber, theirs are on their way. And so anyone who's a new mm -hmm. subscriber, it goes out USPS priority mail. So they just really need to do it two to three days before, depending on how much they trust the US postal system. Um, and the cool part is, is, you know, my favorite thing is the big calendar. So it's got the yes. 2024 calendars in there. I've already got in a bunch of events that I'm already attending for next year. Intentional time i'm gonna hang out with all of you sweet all right well and cool. since you mentioned exactly what to say we are sold out for phoenix but i believe we have just three spots left so if any of you want to join todd and i in october it's right before the AmpCon event with Brene rodriguez so just extend your trip come to both we've got three spots bring an agent if you want um i'll make sure to put the link in the comments that's, and in the chat so that's that dallas texas up. That's Deborah's hometown. I mean, greatest team in America as well. <laughs> Easy now. Go, go Broncos. Uh, but uh, we have, speaking of Broncos, we have a, are you a Denver native, Shay? Or are you just live there? Right. I am born and, born and raised. Yeah, no, I, I am as well. I was born at uh, St. Joseph's Hospital. You know, so, nice. Uh, yeah, Rose, so. Rose Medical. Rose Medical. There you go. There you go. So, so guys, this is the first time we've had Shay as a special guest on a Friday or Tuesday interview. I was introduced to Shay earlier this year by Tony Blodgett, head of production at um, New American Funding, and and he was just this woman is killing it. You know, like the way she's using Mortgage Coach, uh, the success she's having in the marketplace. She's she's special. Dave, you should interview her. So, I mean, based on that introduction and based on that framing, I'm like, oh, I got to interview Shay. Uh, so, Shay, what was it? A couple months ago, we did our we did our first interview? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, I, I'll get the date in, in a minute. But, guys, it was awesome. I mean, not only did she deliver an incredible um, presentation, she shared ideas that were actionable. Whether you're brand new in the business, you got ideas in action, whether you've been doing this forever. Uh, 
she's a great storyteller. Uh, I actually use a couple clips from that interview, like weekly, you know, to educate and inspire people. So Shade, welcome to this call. Um, why don't you tell everyone who hasn't heard from you a little bit, just a little bit about your mortgage practice so everyone can uh, level set on where you're coming from. Sure, sure. Not a problem. So um, born and raised here in Colorado. Um, you know, I got into the mortgage field. It was my my college roommate actually got into mortgage about 12, 13 years ago. And I tend to follow in her footsteps because she has her head on pretty straight. Um, and about eight years ago, she told me, you know, I was just doing oddball sales jobs and I was successful, but I just didn't like per se what I did. I was selling, you know, college degrees that were way too expensive, telephone systems. You know, I just didn't find passion. So she was like, you know what? I need to stop hearing you complain. Go get your mortgage license. So I said, okay. And I did. And when I got it about seven, eight years ago, uh, nobody wanted to hire me because I had zero experience. So I had a loan officer who was willing to hire me, but he only spoke Spanish and his clients only spoke Spanish and I do not speak Spanish. So I literally learned loans through Google Translate. So that was that was fun. That was an experience. Um, and then I uh, got taken on under a pretty heavy hitting LO that's that spoke English. And I was under her for about five years. Um, and then Sarah, my business partner now, she was at a, a at a big bank and we went to Napa one day and, you know, had some wine. That's where the best ideas come from. And we're like, you know, why don't we just throw in the towel? You quit the big bank, you know, and with big banks, you don't really have to per se go after agents. The leads kind of come into you. And I was like, I need to stop being an assistant. And so about two and a half years ago, we joined uh, new American funding out here in Denver and then about five months after we did that, um, we were doing pretty good in production. So my VP offered to let us have our own branch. So now we run a Denver branch here in Denver and hopefully still doing good. Hopefully he still, he'll, he still thinks we're doing good, but um, that's kind of my my journey so far. Yeah, no, it's an awesome journey, you know, jumping in full time. And, and truly, it's I guess it's a little debatable, but most people would say one of the most difficult and brutal, you know, market shifts that we've ever seen. You know, it de definitely it's between 2008, you know, the, what's known as the mortgage meltdown. And right now, I mean, it's a tough market and, and, and you guys are doing really, really good production. So congratulations to you. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. It's a uh, fun, fun times right now, for sure. Got to so, think of a lot of solutions. That's, that's yeah, for sure. So so we can, first of all, anyone tuned into this, watching this, feel free to ask questions, whether you're in Facebook or you're in Zoom, put questions down below. Uh, the bigger audience is going to be watching this in YouTube. Guys, we want your questions too, and any takeaways you got from the conversation. So so Shay, we, we kind of decided to center this around how you're winning with realtors, because clearly you had to go from nothing to winning with agents, and then that clip that I share all the time is how you, you know, use the mortgage coach TCA to root a recruit a realtor, but just kind of start rifting on what do you, you know, tell us stories, share strategies. What are you doing to recruit realtors? What are you doing to get referrals for realtors? What are you and your partner doing? Right. Yeah. So, I mean, I think when it comes to looking for agents, yes, of course we want top dog agents, but also most agents getting into the market at this specific time, they got some balls. Can I, can I say that? Yeah. Yeah, they, you can say anything you want. Okay. You know, because I mean, it's no secret that, that times are tough now and we're seeing newer agents come into the market and they're just, they're, they're, they're killing it from the get go. So it's funny. We were kind of, I was kind of telling you guys about this story um, before we got signed on here. But last night, for example, I'm just going to dive right into it. Um, nope. what, what Sarah, that's Sarah's my, my business partner. She's my, my better half. Um, what we're really marketing right now, and I'm sure everybody else is, is buy downs, right? It's, it's not a secret that rates are high. 
right? So not a lot of people are wanting to buy right now. I mean, we still have buyers out there, of course, but high rates scare people if they are uneducated about it, right? So we're really using Mortgage Coach with our 2-1 buy down talk to educate our buyers about what, what this looks like, right? And we also use it for our agents to talk to them about what a 2-1 buy down looks like or a 1-0 buy down looks like. Um, and I would say probably about 70% of our transactions right now are buy downs. And a lot of the times agents think that it's hard to get or it's somewhat unobtainable and it's, and it's truly, truly not. So um, last night I had a newer agent who I've been working with. Um, we haven't closed any deals together, but he's hungry, right? So I, I give him all of my time, of course. And he has these great clients that called me about two weeks ago. And, you know, they're like, well, we just, we just want to, we just want to wait to buy. We just kind of want to see what we qualify for now. Um, we're not really interested because the rates are high. I, we really want to wait until they go down next year. And I said, absolutely, that's fine. Like, it's all about comfortability, but let me, let me educate you on some things, Right. So I ended up getting a loan application and they're extremely well qualified buyers, even, even for this market. And I always ask them, I kind of work backwards when I talk to clients and I ask them not what they want to qualify, but what's your max mortgage payment, right? What, what is something that you can not go over in a mortgage payment? And they'll say, you know, like 3,500, 4,000. And so I have my assistant Marjorie, who's the other key to our success, um, she does mortgage coaches right away. So I could even send one before I talk to, before I take the loan application or after I take the loan application. And I have Marjorie construct a, um, a mortgage coach to show what the purchase price would look like for that specific mortgage payment that they want. And then what it would look like, what they could purchase for with a two, one buy down, Right. And obviously they like the bigger, prettier house that they could pur purchase at the specific moment in time with a 1-0 or a 2-1 buy down. So I present that to them. And then I also give a little bit of education on the market as best I can. I mean, it's tough right now. None of us have crystal balls, um, but we do as a group think that they will go down next year. You know, we're not gonna see the twos or threes, you know, God forbid we have another COVID. Um, but I like to say maybe back in the fives, I don't, I'm like, do not quote me on this. I do not know what's going to happen. But so when I do a mortgage coach, I'll do it with a two, one buy down, a one Oh buy down with no buy down. And then what a refinance could possibly look like next year at five and a half. Right. And then I educate them on, Hey, when rates do go down, a lot of people are going to be flooding the market. We're going to see what we saw in June of last year, you know, April, May, June of last year, where people are overbidding for the houses. Investors are coming in with all cash offers. Um, you know, you're going in with negative, negative equity. You're put paying for appraisal gaps. So I'm like, if you can stomach your mortgage payment now, or if we can get it, work on getting you a 2-1 buy down now, because seller concessions are still very real right now then now would be the time to buy. And it's not misleading the customer in any way. It's giving them knowledge on all of their options. And then when rates go down next year, we could refinance you into a more permanent rate. And it has been working like gold. And so to kind of, I'm going all over the place, but to circle back to my part where I was talking to the agent last night, who was very newer to this, I actually shared the mortgage coach with them that I showed the buyers um, about what we need to ask for in concessions, offering a little over, making sure the home appraises, what this looks like in more, you know, in mortgage payments. And I helped him write up the offer last night. I called about, I called the listing agent about 30 minutes before I got on this call and we're now under contract today. So that went from two weeks ago, buyers saying that they absolutely did not want to buy, they did not want to purchase until next year to today where they're now under contract and we did get the two one buy down for them. It, so, and you um, helped 
address the needs of realtors. You know, they need they need borrowers who are optimizing their purchase power. Uh, and you, you you totally solve the needs of the consumer. You totally solve the needs of the of the realtor. Uh, at some point, I'm going to want you to actually show that TCA. But Todd, any questions or comments for what you just heard? You know, I got a little bit of both, right? I mean, I, I love the whole idea that you called out that that new agents are successful. And I think it's that beginner's mindset. You know, I've got someone that I that's part of uh, HOA.com and she was a loan processor and got into origination this year. And she's just outworked everyone else in the group and she's having great success now. It took a while, right? It was built, had to build up the momentum. But the fact that she's not afraid to work and the fact that she's following the path that all the greats who come onto these calls talk about is is really important. So I just just think about that. I also love the fact, Shay, that you're not afraid to work with new agents. I love the fact that you're not afraid to work late at night. And so be thinking about these things. I talk to lots of loan officers who are like, oh, I don't want to talk to that agent. They're new. That's going to be a waste of my time. I don't want to talk to that agent. They only do two transactions a year. That's a waste of my time. Or they're like, well, you know what? Granted, I want to balance life and I want that for all you. But they're like, oh, sorry, it's, you know, 459. Dude click, all right, I'll talk to you tomorrow at 10. And so just really think about what it takes to be successful in this market. Um, so I love hearing that. Are you, um, Shay, like what, what's your approach right now then to a realtor to get them? I mean, that's the number one problem people are having is get the meeting. So how are you approaching them and then getting them to actually um, have these conversations with you? Yeah. Um, sorry, my dog's in the background and she just thinks she just fell down the stairs. Um, you can join the call. <laughs> no, you're fine. Um, so to, to get agents, um, Honestly, a huge thing that I do, and I know this isn't everybody's cup of tea, is I leverage social media as much as possible, right? Um, especially for newer agents, I see that they're really trying to beef, beef up their social media. So I'll take some time in the morning, midday, and at night, and I will go on all these agents' posts, and I will comment. I won't do like a heart or the little you know, praise hands, I'll actually take the time to comment. And then I'll usually ask them a question like, Hey, oh my gosh, what a beautiful listing. Um, you know, I heard this neighborhood is great. How did you find this house? You know, or something like that, that really engages them to communicate back to you. Right. And now you have open dialogue and newer agents, they're starving for any type of education, right? They're starving for any type of direction, whether it's from their managing broker, whether it's from a loan officer, anybody that will give them time and boost them um, is huge, you know? And, and I'm always looking for education as well. So when I ask them these questions and they tell me how they got this listing or how they're doing certain things, then I, I adopt that as well. So just always constantly starting communication is huge. Um, you know, and then I do the generic things like first time home buyer classes. So for any agents that want to, you know, host a first time home buyer class, we'll be doing that. Uh, my business partner, Sarah and I, you know, we had a speaker from Utah come in and do like a motivational speech for free. And we invited a ton of agents to that because times are hard right now and people need to keep their spirits up, right? Um, so we're just doing a lot of things to interact with agents. And then not only agents, we're trying to interact with the community. And a really cool thing is about a year and a half ago, we started working with a brand, brand new agent no deals whatsoever. She reached out to us on social media. And as of today, just a year and a half later, she's number one in her whole brokerage. And she sends us so many deals. It's crazy. And she used to be a nurse prior to. So like we came up with marketing for what's called a hero's loan program, where we both the agent and the lender give a little portion of our commissions to, you know, first responders, nurses, doctors, anything. And we've been blowing that up and marketing it to the community. And we've really pigeonholed that community with, with that, you know, but it was a, it was an, it was an agent who didn't have any business. Nobody wanted to give her the time of the day or work on her. And now that's where a pretty good chunk of our, our business is coming from. That is incredible. Uh, D bird. I'm sure you have a, a <laughs> few things to unpack there and maybe some questions for Shay. Well, I just want to point out to everybody that she's using social media as a tool 
and not a toy. And you can absolutely use it for prospecting if you set up the time to do so. Shay, I don't know if you've set up what's called your favorite speed on Facebook and Instagram. I can shoot you a YouTube video of how to do that, but you put your favorites. um, So, you know, your top agent partners who are sending you business or those that you want to send you business. It helps you from not getting distracted from those little notifications where all you have to do is tap on your view and you can switch it to favorite speed and it will only show you those that you have deemed a favorite. So you can be really intentional on who you like and comment on and you don't have to sit there and like scroll forever trying to find your top partners. But so that's a a big time hack and a saver and nobody knows if they're in your favorite speed, um, but it's just a way to be super intentional with your, your partners and show them support because we've seen since 2019, a huge decline in the number of just the human behaviors of people liking and commenting because it's almost Mm -hmm. expected for brands to be online now. So it's a way to really grow your brand without having to create content or even post videos. But if you can show up in that little red notification on social media consistently and also leaving genuine comments, like you said, not just the thumbs up or the heart, but you want to ask questions to keep the conversation going. And so that is a real tactic that works. And in fact, I sent a screenshot. I think I sent it to you yesterday, Dave, of how that's what our clients are doing to get business like right now. And sometimes it's not just their agent partners. Like you may have a borrower that is in every single mom Facebook group that anytime they ask for a lender or real estate agent, they're just, you know, keyboard happy and they'll promote you all over the place. So, you know, look at your database too. Who are your high influencers, whether they're on social or maybe they're like HR directors and they could be people that you also put in your favorite speed. So I'll drop that in the chat and make sure that you have it. So now you can be even more. Yeah. You know, That's awesome because I do get sidetracked with like golf outfits and you know, of course, that's what it does. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, please do. That'd be great. So, so Shay, do you ever um, take like this strategy, you know, like the story you just told us and how you helped an agent and how you optimize the purchase power for a bar? Do you ever take a story like that and then tell that on social media? I don't, I don't, do you follow the mortgage nerd? Denise Donahue, do you know who that is? I don't, I don't know. We're going to have to forward you. uh, By the way, that's Deborah's twin sister. Uh, What? Yeah, she's a- a I know, I look so much younger by 12 minutes, but yes, we're identical. (laughs) There's two of you, that's cool. Yeah, there's two of them. Uh, But she'll do like a story recently. um, She did one with a rep versus own, a mortgage coach, where she told the story- and made that social media content. Do you ever take like the story you just told us and make social media content out of it? I would love to do that actually. Um, So I have a podcast also that I'm doing um, and it's every week we have a different agent come on there and then we upload the podcast is something that's called Opus Reels and they make little and it's and it's free and they make um, social media reels with, with verbiage, you know, and little emojis and stuff. So I take a lot of that content and I share it on social media, but, um, no, that's a good idea. Hopefully, hopefully I could pull something from today with all my rambling, you know? Yeah, no, you're, you're killing it. Well, let's, let's do this. Cause I'm, I'm actually, I think it's only like a couple minutes and I'll, I'll actually play the Instagram reel because I don't even know if it's two minutes. It might be like, you know, less than a minute. I'll play that in a minute. But I want to really, um, like you you set up, you told a story, you set up a strategy, but I want to teach people. So um, sure. you described the TCA that you, you know, hey, I do this to call me. Could you pull up one of your um, mortgage coach total cost analysis and and let's sure. teach people how, and, and do it in the context of how you're walking a realtor through it to help them sell a house so people are like, oh, now I know how Shay is having this conversation, and then I'll and then I'll play um, the little clip from Denise, and maybe we'll like workshop how to go from killer strategy for realtors to social media content. You ready for that? No yeah. problem. Yeah, let me let me find this. Okay, hang on. Um, okay, share screen, yes. I'll tell you when I see it. 
Okay. All right, we got it. All right, let me see if I could put that away. Okay, so this is the one that I did for our clients um, that just went under contract this morning that didn't want to buy anytime soon. Um, so Marjorie, of course, set this up for me because she's amazing. Um, we always put in a rent section right here to show what they're paying in rent just as context because then as you can see below, we have our little rent to own area down here, which is pretty cool to show people. Um, but so what I did, and this is before they even got under contract, they found a house that they absolutely loved, right? And um, they wanted to see what their payment would be with a 2-1 buy down, a 2-1 buy down on their second year when it goes up a percent, and then what it would be at their current note rate. And then of course, we always add in if they were to refinance if rates get better, I do not promise them this, right? But it's just more or less education. Um, so you could see right here in this 2-1 buy down, um, you know, their rate would be in the fives and they really wanted their payment to be under four grand, right? Their max payment was four grand. Um, and they didn't want to go over 600, you know, a $600,000 purchase price. Um, the home was listed at 600 the agent and I last night pulled comps um, to make sure that it would support a 620 purchase price. And we definitely think it will. So we asked for, and what we needed for the 2-1 buy down was 14 grand in concession. So we asked for 14 grand in concessions. Um, and that's kind of how, because there were multiple offers on the house. And that's kind of how we got the contract. As you can see with the 14 grand in concessions, the buyer is still walking away with 6,000 more. Does that make sense? Total kind sense. Of? Okay. Um, so I showed them, hey, if we get that 2-1 buy down this first year, you will be under that 4,000, right? Right here. When it goes up next year, in a year from now to 6.875, we will be a little over that 4,000, you know, that 4,000. And they are aware of that. And that's why I wanted to educate them on that. And if, God forbid, we can't refinance you within two years and it goes up to that 7.875, then this is going to be your payment. But this is going to give you a lot of time to be able to save and be able to understand where your mortgage payment is going to go. But then I always kind of end on a happy note. But guys, if we can refinance you back into the mid fives next year or even the year after, this is what you could be seeing with a possible refinance right? So no promises made, but just complete and utter education, right? And they were about it. They did not want to go into the market next year where they're overbidding for a house, they're overpaying for a house, they're going in with negative equity. And I just gave them the education and they themselves made the educated decision on if they wanted to pull the trigger or not. And they did, and they're now under under contract. And then what I showed the agent last night is, you know, if we click on the more info button um, and we go into closing costs, you can see that the contributions are not going to be paid by the buyer, right? These are seller paid contributions to get those concessions. And this is just, I just visually showed the agent what I was showing the clients. And I mean, he thought it was genius. I know he won't, you know, go go anywhere else. And he's, he's, he was working with me up until 11 a.m. last night and 7 a.m. this morning. So I know he's a grinder and he's definitely somebody's business. I, you know, I want to keep and I value. So, and this here mortgage coach helped a lot. Love, love how you did it. Hey, do hit the, the little, um, we call it the advice engine where you do the input. I think it's the tab right next to this. I want to. I want to go to the advice engine. Your, Wait, this is what Mar. Right? This was what Marjorie usually does for me. I'm not sure how to get. Uh, okay, so you don't usually log in to Mortgage Coach and edit oh, it, or do you... I just do the presentations. Marjorie <laughs> right. is the one who sets. She's the brains behind everything. Okay. Well, one one thought. Scroll down to the bottom. And okay. by the way, this is a lesson for everyone. Um, this will show that bottom tab real quick. Uh, no, uh, the, the, actual, the actual graphic. I want to. No, no. I want to show. Oh, there you go. Stop right there. Got uh, it. So, guys, this is one way to show it. 
And you could also show the net worth. So she could have a tab where it would actually show the net worth difference between renting and owning. So sometimes you want to kind of show both of those. Um, I'll show you how Denise did it in a minute. Uh, first of all, Todd or Deborah, anything you want to call out before she stops sharing her screen? I just want to really put the squeeze on you to show up. I call it TCA Tuesday, where if you can get good and just discipline yourself on showing up, and sometimes this can be done in the stories, or you'll see, because um, we tagged some of Denise's posts in the, the chat, but if you took just a small example of this, Shay, and showed up every Tuesday, because you you're, you have great energy and you're very easy to follow. But what happens is you start to position yourself in the mindset of your borrowers and your agent partners of how you think differently. To me, there's no other way to do that effectively without showing a mortgage coach. So, but it takes consistency. And if you just do that over time, I can't even imagine, like your business would probably grow just as quickly as Denise's did when she started doing that. Um, so I just, I put the squeeze on you to try to, to bookmark that in on Tuesdays that maybe look at the last seven days, where was there a win where either you helped a buyer make a better decision or you helped convert a buyer from just sitting on the, the fence, you know, and just talk about the problem that you solved as a storytelling example, but always using the TCA to give that credibility so people can follow the story because that's what gives validity to the words. Absolutely. You got it, girl. Okay, so go ahead and stop sharing. And, and if you could um, afterwards share that link with us so we can share it in, in chat. So, so I, guys, I want to finish this lesson because I think there's a really powerful lesson that we could show you right here. Um, hang on, let me make sure I'm sharing the right um, screen. So when I play the video, you all can hear it. Give me one second. Okay, here we go. So, so first of all, I am going to the actual interview I did with Denise, like literally a couple of weeks ago. I wanna remind you guys, these links are always at the bottom. So the total cost analysis that Denise shared are down here. And with Shay's interview, we'll be doing the same. Like whatever she shares with us, we'll put it down below in show notes. But I want to play this little IG reel real quick. I like to look at the real estate market, see what the trends are. And I wanted to share this with you because it kind of made me want to vomit. But take a look at this. So I'm looking at Frisco, Texas right now. We are still in a strong seller's market. But this is the statistic that sat out to me. Median rent right now in Frisco, Texas is $3,500 a month. That is so much money. So then it made me think, well, what could you buy for $3,500 a month and should you? Let me show you. So here's the analysis I ran. If you're paying $3,500 a month and you only have 5% to put down on a home, you could essentially keep your payment the same and buy at around $365,000. But here's where I almost vomited. If we were to analyze this over the next 120 months or 10 years, you would have paid almost half a million dollars in rent. And rent just threw all of this away. But by owning, you would have put $52,000 back in your pocket because this is the principal amount of your payment that you get to keep that goes towards your loan balance. And then your net worth at the end of 15 years, if you're renting, is zero because that money doesn't work for you. But take a look at this. By owning, your net worth is $388,000 more than paying rent. So every Monday morning, I like to Ooh. look at the real- Hey, what are, what are your thoughts? Did you, know, did you like that? That's, it, that's huge. Huge. I, I and was that like, was all done hey. with her iPhone. So no fancy equipment needed. You yeah. know, when you go to the Reels tab, you can just switch from your view on the camera. But I mean, other than that's, her nails, which drive me nuts. It was fantastic. Yeah, no, that's, that's, um, that's amazing. I'm 110% going to be us utilizing this. I know Marjorie's watching because I told her to call me out if I'm doing anything bad. And she already did once. Um, but Marjorie, I know you're listening. Let's do that hands down 110%. That's, that's huge. I, uh, I would be like, if that was me, I'd be like, oh my gosh, these are all the places that I could go golfing at, you know, with that money or something. But right. that's so everybody could take that knowledge and run with it. That's, I love that. 
for sure. Yeah, so so lesson to everyone, big opportunity focusing on seller buy downs in this market. Two one buy downs. We'll share the TCA. You know the best practices when talking with a first time home buyer is do the rent versus own, so you can show the net worth impact and and show different options. So Todd, you're a coach. Any win by new coaching on this strategy before we ask Shea for another story and strategy? Well, I mean, just freaking awesome strategy, right? I mean, I think the what what I love is the fact that you know if if you think about it, there's some of you who are like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that she doesn't have to do her own TCA. So, I mean, you should all be visioning, right? How can you um, create a practice where you're an, a mortgage advisor and you focus on advising your clients and realtors, and you actually have a team that does the other pieces of the business, right? I mean, I think that is sort of the the ultimate. And, you know, Shay's not sitting back and, you know, uh, eating uh, sweet tarts and Oreos. Uh, she is actually, you know, still working hard, right? To 11 o'clock last night. And so I just you know, encourage you all to think about it. And then, you know, obviously the win by noon part of it is, is most of the people put off these things that they want to do, um, that they should do until later in the day after they're done reacting to all the really not important stuff. And if you really want to do it, you put it in your calendar, you schedule it. I mean, Deborah continues to give us all the tools and, and knowledge to do it. Certainly, uh, you know, I use plug and play SM because it makes it even easier for me. I'm not having to schedule the time to do it because they are. Um, but ultimately, you've got to make it a priority, right? If you are sitting here watching this live or again, or, or watching the video and you're thinking, oh, you know what? I really thought about that a month ago and didn't do it. I thought about it a day ago and didn't do it. You just have to make the choice to start doing it. And so I really think that there's an opportunity for all of us. Um, you know, Dave has been sharing just some amazing content with me that he's been recording with these mortgage executives talking about kind of the average loan officer that, you know, the average loan officer is actually costing their company money. And I was just kind of blown away by it. I, you know, sort of know these kind of things about it, but I think there's just such an opportunity for us all to be better. And I uh, just love the fact that we're sharing great ideas and that, you know, Shay's a great example for the rest of us on what we can do if we just choose to execute. Yeah. And for all the mortgage executives listening, what Shay is doing, and one of the reasons why Tony loves Shay, is, is when it comes to like the top tier loan officers that are the most profitable and the most successful going forward versus the, the bottom quartile, there's there's two words that start with C and N. One is conversion, like efficiencies, credit report disclosures versus loans. And Shay, I guarantee. Her, her conversion is, is better than the bottom quartile and two concessions, uh, you know, price exceptions. And while price exceptions are going to happen, when you're giving the kind of value that Shea is delivering, you're going to have less concessions. And so Shea is going to win. The company is going to win. That is the way forward. So Shea, any, any other um, stories or strategies on how you're winning with realtors in Denver, Colorado right now? Yeah, of course. Um, I just wanted to touch on the fact real quick, though, that having a team is massive, right? And when I first started, I was just, I was a an assistant for, for so long. And so when I went out on my own, of course, I can't go up, I can't go after her agents that would be classless. Um, so you really have to start over, right? And I, we didn't have any assistance at the time. And it's really getting out there and getting your feet on the street. And if you need to work at night, then work at night. If you need to wake up and work early in the morning, then work early in the morning and make it happen. And being out there involved, going to events, if it's an agent event, if it's another lender event, if it's any type of an event in your community that you connect with and you're passionate about, get out there and go, right? Get those leads, start having those leads come in. You will see conversion and then you'll be able to hire a Marjorie who holds it down for us like crazy. And, and she, she actually tells us, she's like, I want you guys in the office less because if you're in the office more and more, I'm not doing something right. Right. Like I need to have you guys be out there getting the leads coming in. She sets up the mortgage close, you know, coaches and we close business. So it's just, it's just huge to have a team once you get there, but it takes a lot of work to go, go into that. Um, Hey, real quick, I just want to insert something right there because there, there's still new loan officers in the business and people struggling. I, I don't know if you did this, but one of the things when people are new in the business and they're new to mortgage coach, I tell them, you know what, go out 
and call all your writer friends, especially new loan officers. They got a lot of friends writing and say, hey, I need your help. I need to practice my rep versus own conversation with you. Will you let me, you know, not trying to tell you need to buy. I just want to practice doing this rep versus own conversation. And, and what happens is one, they get good at having the conversation, doing the analysis, and they get some deals. Um, any, any, first of all, any thoughts on that script or any other suggestions you have? Because while you were an assistant for five years, you're still like, you haven't even been in the business for three years. So any, any thoughts on that script or any other ideas for new loan officers? Yeah, no, I think that's a great idea because when I was sitting behind the computer all day, every day, um, I didn't have a lot of face-to-face -face interaction, right? So I was, my confidence was a lot lower. So when I did get into having to do more face-to-faces, and I remember the first time I actually ever did a mortgage coach, I was terrified. And it was me talking, oh my goodness, let me let me throw my dog out of here. I know you guys can hear her, hang on. Your dog's fine, we're not here. Uh, she's being the worst. Um, I was terrified, but it's literally just you talking to the computer, but there's video, you know, and I was so scared and I never even thought about, you know, trying that with renter friends, but that's a good thing because then you can educate your renter friends. You're not so nervous. You could build up your confidence with, with, with what you're doing and then you're educating them and hopefully they'll, you know, use you when they're ready to buy. Um, yeah. But yeah, it, it is really just working on your confidence and where a lot of my confidence came from was educating myself, right? Because getting in the lending business after you, after you're done learning about the laws and the regulations and you take the test and you pass the test, then you're like, okay, well now what do I do? Cause taking the test doesn't teach you how to go out there and get business, right? It doesn't physically teach you how to actually do a loan. Um, so my biggest thing for newer loan officers would be educate yourself. And I know this sounds like an icky thing to do, but guideline books come out, start reading up on some guidelines. If your company has really cool niche products, educate yourself on those products, right? Um, once you're more educated, your confidence is going to come off a lot more powerful and people are going to love that and they're automatically going to gravitate towards you. And that's my biggest thing with the two one buy downs. Now it's a pretty easy thing to understand, you know, once you get the hang of it. And then if you're pitching something to an agent like this, who doesn't know much about it, that's such a value add and you're going to be their go-to. Um, so that's cool. And that kind of turns around into, you know, I kind of talked about how I work with newer agents, but the story, Dave, that I told you um, is I was, even as an assistant, there's this one agent in Colorado, and I just think she's a, a badass. She's always top 10 in all of Denver. Um, she helps rescue dogs. I mean, she, she, she does it all. And I'm like, I want her. I want her business, you know? And um, I was doing the whole social media thing where I was commenting on all of her stuff. If I saw that she was going to a, an event, you better believe I'm going to be there at that event. And I really just started in, inserting myself into her world, right? Pretty, pretty annoying. I tried to do it in a non-annoying way, but I, you know, to each their own. Um, and I was just begging her forever. And I'm like, you know, we should really do some business together. I rescued a dog. You know, I inserted myself with the whole dog thing. And she finally threw me a lead. You know, she's just like, oh, here, like, thank you. You're persistent. Like, here you go. And she's top 10 in Denver. She has her preferred lenders that she works with. I'm, she has like two that she was really, really in tight with. She gave me the lead and I was like, okay, I'm not going to F this one up at all. And, um, we, I was probably like three, four months into mortgage coach, not a pro, thank God for Marge again. Um, but I did a mortgage coach and this was before there were two, one buy downs. And I think it was really just a simple one, maybe like a one or two columned line mortgage coach. Um, you know, and I got my face on there and I recorded it because showing face is huge, right? 
because as as loan officers, it's the agents that meet face to face with the buyers. As the loan officers, we we really don't. Sometimes we do, right? Sometimes they go to the office, um, but. But for, for my business personally, I usually don't see them face to face until we're sitting down at the closing table. Um, and I think the personal interaction with the video really helps retain because we know that everybody out there is shopping left and right for, for, for lenders, for rates. So it's another good key of why I love it so much. Um, but I sent it, I must have just done like a two and a half, three minute recording. And then I sent it to the buyer but what I did is I also CC'd the agent on there and I sent it and immediately the agent called me probably not, not more than five minutes later. And she was like, what, what did you, what did you just do? And I was like, I was scared at first. I'm like, oh, like I didn't. And she's just like, this was perfect. Like, I don't like you educated me on it. You educated my buyer. And she's like, I've never seen this before. And she goes, how long did that take you to do? And I know Marge tells me this all the time. She's like, dude, just learn mortgage coach. It literally takes me for like the one that I shared with you guys earlier. It probably took her about seven or eight minutes to put together. Right. Um, but the agent was like, gosh, all these graphs and all these numbers, like you put in so much work, like, thank you so much. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you're so welcome. Even though, right. It's like eight minutes of your time. Um, and now she's my top number one agent that I use and I get tons of business from, and it's just crazy to me though, that she's one of the number one agents in all of Colorado and she's never seen mortgage coach before. So it's another big win. So it, it works for agents that have been around a long time. It's worked for brand new agents that have never done a deal, um, and again, it just kind of circles back to my biggest thing on education. I feel like I can't preface much about how important educating everybody, buyers, other lenders, real estate ag agents is in this market. And mortgage coach is an amazing, easy way, face-to-face -face interaction way to do it. it. Really covers all basis points. Wow, that you you told that story. You just told it even better. And uh, and then thank you for. You know, again, part of my mission at Mortgage Coach is to change how people get into debt in America so that they get transparency, options, strategies to optimize purchase power, strategies to pay off their mortgage faster. So thanks for helping in that mission and getting one of the top 10 realtors in the state of Colorado on the on mission with us. Really appreciate that. Uh, you know, I, I do want to also, Brendan Bracken just, you know, going to shout out. He loved that script on, I just want to practice uh, a rep versus own. I want to remind you guys, you can call a homeowner up and say, I need to practice a move up analysis. And here's what's going to happen. You're going to find some buyers that either want to sell and move up or rent out their house and move up. And now you can bring those back to your realtors, you know, and so when you can give the kind of value that Shay's giving, going beyond the normal experience with every pre-approval, and then going beyond the normal experience with all the consumers that you serve, it can be a big deal. Uh, Deborah, anything you want to unpack from what she just shared? You want to call out or any questions you want to share? Ask? Yeah, then, I, that small little seven to eight minute time investment that you made to create the TCA, like the ROI of that, to be able to wow the agent and now you know, the continuous income that you make. I just want to put an exclamation point on the fact that I, I hear sometimes loan officers say it takes too long. And I'm like, but what is it costing you if you don't do it? Like, is it worth the cost? It's kind of like, does applying for a mortgage, right? It's not fun. It may take 10 minutes to apply and then you got to go find all your paperwork. But is that investment worth the time to get out of renting? Absolutely. So don't allow yourself or that negative voice to make the excuse for you that you don't have time to give every single borrower a TCA. They deserve that information so that they can make the most informed decision for them. That's more than just, here's your rate, here's your payment. It's here's how this impacts you over time. Decisions today are going to make an impact. So how do we be strategic with it? So for anyone who's listening, and if you don't have a, an assistant to help you, you if you go back and watch these videos that Dave has done, or go to the Mortgage Coach 
mortgagebook.com and go to support. They do daily trainings of how you can get more efficient in setting up your mortgage coach where there's people that do it in less than four minutes. Um, so you get better with more practice and just make the investment. It, I promise it gives you an ROI like no other. Tyler, anything you want to call out or unpack from what she shared? Oh, I mean, again, it's it's the whole idea of being bold, right? I mean, you heard Chase say she, she wasn't even probably a great TCA that she put together. And so it's the whole idea that done is better than perfect. And a lot of you are trying to make this perfect. But the fact is she was bold. And, and I just say she put herself in the path of opportunity, right? She made sure she was there in front of that realtor, uh, made sure that she you know, saw her, smiled, talked to her, was bold enough to keep kind of joking with her that, hey, you know, we should do some business. And then uh, once she was given that opportunity, she shined, right? She differentiated herself because obviously if you are a top 10 uh, realtor in your market, you're getting hit up every single day by loan officers trying to get your business. And none of the other loan officers who've hit her up before that uh, had enough of an impression to earn that opportunity. So I would just really think about that as, especially those of you, you know, like people joke, like I'm an introvert, right? I'm actually an extroverted introvert, I call myself. Um, I, but I'm, but I'm willing to be bold. I put myself out there like all, all like that when I was building my business. And I think you have that opportunity too, but you can, you've got to make, you've got to make that choice. Um, how would you encourage someone, Shay, who's just thinking, oh, I just can't do that. You know, Shay's so great. She's young. She's, you know, all these things and they're not. And, you know, how would you just encourage them to get out there and get off their butt and do it? Be you, right? You, you can't please everybody. You cannot, you cannot conform yourself to be everybody. So find out the agents that you want to work with, the agents that you want to vibe with. Trust me, there's the market is flooded with agents right now. So whatever you find passion in, like I find passion. I do have a dog that you guys saw. She's very annoying, but I have passion with animals. I have a passion for golf, right? So when I see agents uh, again on Instagram or social media golfing, I will say, Hey, like, you know, let's go golfing. Let's do, let's do this. And it, so it doesn't come off disingenuine, right? Everybody has a hobby. Everybody has something that they enjoy. And typically people do want to share that on social media. They do want to share that to the world. So if it's something that you're passionate about and you mesh well with, then go after, go after that person that way. Right. Um, but you got to be good. And I know this is getting a little deep. You got to be good with yourself first. Right. And you got to believe in yourself and you've got to have that confidence and, um, you know, when this market started to slow down, I started getting down and I saw, I started doing less and less and less and less and my business followed it. And about two months ago, my hairdresser actually, she told me to listen to an audio book. It's free on YouTube. If you want to listen to it, it's called the power of the subconscious mind. And I think it's by Joseph gosh, something, but it's called the power of the subconscious mind. It's a free audio book on YouTube and it's all about positive thinking and it, but it goes so in depth and even your subconscious, if you tell yourself you can't, or if you tell yourself you're nervous or you're uneducated, or you're not good enough to go after these agents, then that is what is going to happen. If you physically tell yourself I am good enough. I got this. I am going to close all these deals. I am going to get this agent. Then that will happen. Um, so it's just, I would encourage everybody to listen to that audiobook, And then again, find people who you mesh well with and go after them and go get them because you will do it for sure. I love it. One thing I want to remind everyone or tell everyone too, is we're going to have a great guest next Friday. Um, a guy named Lance Billingsley, who's someone that I've gotten to know in the local market here, who was uh, part of the original launch of Zillow offers. He's tell stories about sitting with the executive team at Zillow. And he's really going to talk about how he's super passionate about real estate agents becoming advisors. So just like Dave, and we are in this community about loan officers, um, not being loan officers, be eradicate that word, as Dave says, and become mortgage advisors. Um, he's all about that. So it's going to be a great call next Friday and a great conversation around how he thinks our industry can help the real estate industry become better advisors as well. And, and that's a great mention, Todd, and uh, another idea for you, Shay, you know, in addition to taking these kind of one-on-one -on -one stories and turn them into one-to-many stories on social media, 
but because you have become such a great advisor, you know, through you and your team, uh, that's something you could be teaching to loan officers, you know, how to go like, because loan officers need to become data-driven mortgage advisors and realtors need to become local wealth advisors. You know, let me help families in my community build wealth with real estate. And they have to do that. Like, and, and, and by the way, any realtor that doesn't buy into that, probably not your people anyways. So, you know, something to think about for everyone watching this, uh, you know, you're, you're part of a community because you're in this community that you either use our software or you follow us because you get ideas, but, but there's a tremendous opportunity because the industry has to shift. Like, like 63% of mortgages start with two or 3%. How, how are we going to get those families to move up if not by showing them advice and not future casting how they can accelerate building wealth with real estate? Uh, first time home buyers, there's an affordability crisis in America. There's a financial literacy crisis in America. How are we going to help them go from, should I move up to, hey, I've got, I'm optimizing my purchase power. I'm winning the offer to get the house, or maybe they need to buy a duplex, triplex, or house hack buy a house, rent out two bedrooms. But if you're not an advisor, you you cannot crush those conversations. So Shay, we're in the last couple minutes. I wanna make sure any you know last ideas you wanna share, anything that you, you just think is a good closing thought from this conversation for anyone tuned in. Thoughts? Um, gosh, I don't know. You know, just going off my topic of believing in yourself, you know, like I, when, when I first started mortgage, recently divorced, not a dime to my name. You know, I didn't come from money, you know, was in and out of rehab facility facilities, always told that I would never make it, you know? So it's always about putting in the work, right? If you don't put in the work, you're not going to get the work. Believing in yourself, knowing that you are good enough, knowing that yes, it is a hard market, but I can do it and I will do it. And then utilizing your education and utilizing all the tools around you and mortgage coach is probably the number one tool that I use. So you, you got to believe in yourself and you can't stay negative. And I think that's how I'll, I'll, I'll leave it. Well, you, you are an incredible story. I am super inspired hearing you. I want everybody to echo like, you know, here she is, she's, you know, made it. She's got a sustainable mortgage practice, top producer. I can't wait to watch you grow in the coming years. And, and you can hear in her, in her voice when she created that first CCA, that first video, she was scared. You know, like it was hard and, and everything is hard until it becomes easy. You know, but you, you, do, you do it once, it's the hardest. You do it two, three, four, five, you know, probably 10 to 20 videos later, you're like, oh, this is pretty easy, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, Deborah, anything you want to share as a closing thought before we have Todd close it out? Well, I mean, heck, she made it. Your first couple of years, you were working for a loan officer that didn't even speak English. I mean, my gosh, you definitely <laughs> have grit. So um, kudos to you. And thank you for just sharing your story and coming on here and helping those who may be, you know, the person that you were five years ago that may be thinking, how do I make that move or building that confidence to take that step. Cause even just going from the bank world where you're fed leads and going to where now you have to eat what you kill. I mean, that also took bravery and boldness. And so um, for anyone who's listening and you're in fear of maybe taking that next step, all I can encourage you to say is just, as long as you believe in yourself and you have that belief and you will work, the plan works when you work. You need a plan. And you got to work. You got to get to work. You got to work. <laughs> and you got to believe, you know? Yeah. So. Believe. All right, Todd. Take us home, brother. Well, you know, Shay, that was just a gift to the community. It's great to uh, get to meet you here on Zoom after uh, Dave spoke so highly of you. And I've seen the other clip he's played numerous, numerous times. <laughs> and I uh, just love Thanks, it. Thanks, Thanks for sharing with, with our community. I think there's this whole idea of work the plan. Deborah just said it. And so I would invite y'all it's free. Literally it's, it's, it's not like a big, big sales pitch, 60 day free coaching program, uh, earn hundred K. So if you're a bit like me and you think you need a plan, then jump on that. Just go to my win by noon mastermind group. Uh, there's a link down below 
and you can sign up in there. Just uh, say you're part of the Mortgage Coach community. I'll let you into the group and uh, register and want to help you who are looking to grow. So I'm super excited about it more than you can imagine. Yeah, no, I got the, I got the vibe, man. I can, I can feel it. So, so Shay, super grateful for you. Uh, hope to meet you in person. So not, not hope. I'm looking forward to meeting you in person one day. Uh, Perfect. Keep pushing it in Denver and turning, uh, turning, you know, borrowers, let them know what mortgage coach is, letting them know what trust agent is. We really, we appreciate you. Uh, for anyone tuned in, if you have not already subscribed to both our mortgage coach YouTube channel, subscribe today or our trust engine, which is innovation for leaders. You know, every week we're interviewing amazing people that are doing amazing things. So this is a wrap. Take care, everybody. Thanks again, Shay. Bye. Thank you. Cheers.